talk, shop, pop, movies. Ahoy there, this is Derek, the Convicted Cinephile, and if you're a Convicted Cinephile yourself, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel down below. On my channel, I like to talk, shop, and pop, open, that is, movies and physical media. Today, I will be partaking in Huck from Huck. I can't talk. Why can't I say his channel name every time I screw it up? Huck from Huck's Pop Culture Cafe's 25 Directors Challenge. I've done the uh, ABC, you know, A through Z challenge, the actors and the actresses. Now I'm finally doing the directors. I made this pile pretty quick, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but there was two that I would have had in here that I couldn't because I don't have individual copies of the movies that I've already said. For one, I think I already picked Psycho in one of the other videos. I honestly don't remember, and I didn't feel like rewatching them. So I don't have any other standalone Hitchcock movies. I only have a Psycho steelbook and then a huge box set of like 15 of his movies. And I just don't want to grab the box set. So Alfred Hitchcock probably would be in here <laughs> if I had more of his uh, standalone releases. And Paul Verhoeven. I already pulled Robocop and Total Recall. I think in my ABC challenge, and those are the only two Verhoeven movies I own currently. I don't have Starship Troopers at the moment, but I also probably would have chosen him as well. So here is the other 25 I did. I guess you're supposed to do an ensemble, but for directors that doesn't really make sense to me because it's not an acting thing, because it's an acting ensemble. Every movie has an ensemble from a director's standpoint. So I'm just gonna stick with 25. These are in no particular order. Uh, Tim Burton is my first one I am doing. He was extremely influential to me in my early teens. Uh, yes, but I'm going to go old school Tim Burton and do Pee-wee's Big Adventure. His first film, one I sort of grew up on, that I love. It's hilarious. If you haven't seen Pee-wee's Big Adventure, it is one of the better <laughs> Tim Burton movies in my opinion. Another comedy director that I almost didn't think of at the time while uh, pulling all these and decided to at the last second because I saw this. Mel Brooks, how can I not pick Mel Brooks? I did a whole video about him a couple months ago about all of his movies and how great he is. So I grabbed the producers because it's the only one yet again that I have not in a box set from the same director. I could have almost done this in director's box set challenge, but that would have been boring. Uh, so I figured I'd go with well, yet again his first film, just like Pee, -Wee Pee Wee's Big Adventure, the producers from Mel Brooks, Oscar winning screenplay. Then everyone, you know, Everyone's going to do Quentin Tarantino, so why not me, right? I chose Pulp Fiction. It's not my favorite of his films, but I already chose Django Unchained and Inglorious Bastards in another video that was part of the series. And we're not trying to pick the same thing twice. So I figured I'd just go easy and say Pulp Fiction. This would be a good ensemble one, so hey, count this. I already picked Shawshank Redemption, and I wanted to do Frank Darabont. Luckily, he has another 10 out of 10 masterpiece, The Green Mile, once again, a Stephen King adaptation. Got this nice digi book back when, you know, they made cool things for Blu-rays. Uh, but yeah, The Green Mile is amazing. Haven't gotten the 4K yet because personally I just like having this at the moment. You know, when they're, when they're giving those away, I'll grab the 4K. Stanley Kubrick. Gotta have Stanley Kubrick in there. Uh, I went with Clockwork Orange because they got the cool steel book and it's pretty. So I figured I'd grab that. I love this movie. It's dark. It's creepy. It is a movie where you can take one of the worst characters in film history and somehow feel bad for him by the end of it. And only Stanley Kubrick <laughs> could pull off such a feat. So that is one reason this is potentially my favorite of all of his films that I've seen. Uh, George Lucas. Honestly, he's not the greatest director, but this is one of my favorite films. And it's my favorite George Lucas film, and it's not the one people would probably expect me to pull, American Graffiti. Yes, I love Star Wars, but he only directed the original and the prequels that, you know, I like, but let's be honest, they're not masterpieces. So American Graffiti is his best film, in my opinion, that he wrote and directed. It is his best writing. It is his most interesting direction out of all of his films. I do like THX 1138. I could have grabbed that as well, but this movie is better. Alexander Payne is one that kind of goes under the radar, I think. And this is one of the most surprisingly funny and rewatchable movies that I've ever seen. 
I could just listen to this movie and love it. And it has gorgeous cinematography. It's Nebraska, if you didn't catch that. Um, it's got, why can't I think of his name now? <laughs> it's got Will Forte, who I love. Bruce Dern, there we go. I hope I didn't already pick this for one of them. I have a feeling I did. <laughs> I know I picked Sideways, so that's why I don't think I picked this one. Nebraska, very good. Best Picture nominee, hilarious movie. It has Bob Odenkirk in it as well. I had to go Alfonso Cuaron, who is a beautiful filmmaker. And I'm gonna go with Gravity on this one. His Oscar-winning space masterpiece. See, masterpiece right on it. Uh, this is the 3D one, so that's neat. Uh, yeah, this movie, I saw it in theaters. I didn't see it in 3D in theaters, but I saw it in theaters and it was like a packed house and I had to sit in like the almost front seat. And this is like the only movie I've ever seen that close to the screen where it actually helped, I think. Otherwise, that would drive me insane. But the opening 15 minutes of this movie is one of the greatest sequences I've ever seen in any movie ever. A Spike Jones. I don't have being John Malkovich, otherwise I would have pulled that, honestly. Uh, and I already pulled Adaptation for my Meryl Streep pull. So luckily I have Her, which is a great movie. Um, I almost pulled this for my Joaquin Phoenix pull, but then I thought, ooh, I, might use, I need this for a director for Spike Jones. So that's why I did not. So there we have Her. Very good movie. Another Best Picture nominee. One Best Original Screenplay for Mr. Jones. So that was cool. Silly me. I just remembered a Paul Thomas Anderson film that I love that I haven't picked yet. There Will Be Blood. It stars Daniel Day-Lewis, who I chose for my acting thing, so I had it in the back of my head that I already picked it. But I chose uh, Gangs of New York, I think, for that. So yes, Paul Thomas Anderson, arguably his masterwork. I personally enjoy Boogie Nights more than this, and Magnolia about the same. But yeah, Paul, yeah this, this performance is ridiculous. And Paul Dano's amazing in it. This Paul Dano needs an Oscar nomination like no tomorrow. Danny Boyle. Oh, Danny Boyle, the pipes, the pipes are calling. Danny Boyle, I already picked 28 Days Later for my number pick for my ABC, or A through Z, I keep saying ABC, A through Z challenge. Uh, I'm going to go with Sunshine. This movie is awesome. If anyone hasn't seen this movie, <laughs> go buy it right now. It's probably pretty cheap. Uh... I remember buying this from Circuit City when they were going out of business. Uh, oddly enough, it's the only thing I bought from them. And, and a shelf, actually. I bought one of their shelves and then this movie, and that's it. But this movie has, yet again, a great ensemble of actors. The gist of it is the sun is dying, and it is the future, and they are sending astronauts to space with a nuclear weapon, essentially, to shoot it into the sun to reignite it so the Earth does not die. And this is the second mission they've done and on the way, they find the first mission just drifting out near the sun when they start to get closer to it. And uh, shit gets weird, let's just say that. I honestly think this is one of the best sci-fi movies, at least of its decade. Darren Aronofsky. I already picked The Wrestler, I think, for Marissa Tomei. So I can't grab that again. Uh, so I'll go with Requiem for a Dream. This was the uh, first movie of his I saw. I still haven't seen Pi, which is the only movie I think he made before this. Got the pretty you know, steel book that everybody has from Best Buy very glary so we'll do that i haven't watched it yet this release of course because i never have time to maybe someday it's hard to watch a movie like this with a four-year-old around the house. but it's a very good movie very powerful movie about drug addiction very angry score that i personally love i remember one time i was watching it by myself and it was during like the climax when the score reaches its peak and it gets really like loud and scary and it's obnoxious out of context so my wife came home as it was happening she's like what the fuck are you watching she couldn't stand it but i'm like but in context great score david fincher one of the best directors working today i might i think did i grab social network already i can't remember if i didn't i would have grabbed that but it's in my Columbia Classic set, and it's a pain in the ass. And I already did Zodiac for my A through Z. So I'll just go, you know, I'll be lazy and grab seven like everyone else will. Uh, sing Seen Better Days. But it's another nice digi book. I like when Warner Brothers used to do these for everything. They're cool. Can't go wrong with seven. It was the one that made David Fincher a household name. That's for true. Morgan Freeman, Brad Pitt, Kevin Spacey. Seven. Everybody loves it. Speaking of Brad Pitt, Bennett Miller. Does anyone know that guy? With, from me just saying it, directed a few very good films. I think he's directed three movies. Two of them were nominated for Best Picture, and two of them he was nominated for Best Director. 
Capote with Philip Seymour Hoffman, which I think I pulled for the actor one. And come on, brain, do your job. Foxcatcher. There we go. That was nominated for Best Director, but not Best Picture, and it was the first movie since the Oscars expanded ballot to do that, so it was really weird. This movie was the opposite, where it was nominated for Best Picture, but not Best Director, but it is one of my favorite movies, and one of the only sports movies that I really, really love. I don't care about sports. I like sports movies, oddly, but I don't like sports. Uh, but Moneyball is an extremely well-written, well-acted, interesting film with Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill. This is Jonah Hill's first Oscar nomination as well. This might be, out of all like the Oscar nominees from 2011, my favorite film that year. And it is another one that's extremely rewatchable and gets better every time because it's just so well made. Just everything about this movie is perfect, in my opinion. Denis Villeneuve, there we go. Uh, I'm going to go Prisoners. Here we go. Prisoners, still probably my favorite film of his. Not, you know, arguably not his best, but it's very grounded Great cast, great performances. Jake Gyllenhaal's awesome in this movie. Another Paul Dano performance that is fantastic. And huge Ackman. Sam Mendes. I don't think I picked this one yet. Because uh, I didn't pick it for the numbered movie that was 28 Days Later. So I'll go for 1917. Uh, I already had this in my stack and then I ran across Road to Perdition. I was like, oh, that would have been a good one too. Uh, but 1917, it's gorgeous. He should have won Best Director for this over Parasite, in my opinion. I have nothing against Parasite winning Best Picture, but this was more of a director's achievement than Parasite any day of the week. You gotta have Senior Spielberg go on your list, right? See, Steven Spielberg. What are you gonna... I already picked Saving Private Ryan. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. So I, uh, I went with his other Best Picture and director winning masterpiece. Schindler's List. Yes, a lot of people are like, I can't watch that movie. It's too sad. Sorry? Like, what... <laughs> I love this movie. It is beautiful. Everything about it is great. Yes, it's long, so that you know that's probably the only thing that makes it hard to watch for me, just because you got to like dedicate a whole afternoon to it, kind of a thing. But everything about this movie is so outstanding. Uh, it's and this this music in this movie, the score by John Williams, is enough to make me cry. Like I don't even have to watch the movie to know to have the music like make me well up with tears. Uh, Wes Craven. I'll do Wes Craven. I'm not gonna pick Scream and Nightmare on Elm Street because. I think most people would. And once again, I don't want to go grab collections off my shelf. So I'm going to go with the other movie that I like more than most people by him. Last House on the Left. This awesome limited edition arrow set, which I don't think it's available any longer. The limited edition version. But, I mean, give it a week. It'll come out on 4K like every one of their other Blu-rays that I have. Great movie, though, if you can stand it. Sam Raimi. I love Sam Raimi. Um, I already picked Evil Dead things for stuff. And uh, I didn't want to pick Spider-Man, even though I love Spider-Man. Once again, because I only have it in a collection, and I don't want to grab a collection off my shelf. So I'm going to go with Dark Man, the movie when he wanted to make Batman, and they didn't let him, and then, or something, I forget. <laughs> he wanted to make a superhero movie, and he couldn't get the rights to Batman, is what I think it was. So he went and made his own superhero, Dark Man. And this movie is a very comic booky early 90s romp that came out in 1990, I believe. So right between Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness, this is what he did. It was a very successful film for, uh, I want to say, was it MGM? Universal, my bad. Very cheap to make, and it made not like anything crazy, but like $35 million. But at the time, it was a hit by their standards. So it was nice. It has my girl Franny in it and Liam Neeson. Got a few Liam Neeson movies in my pile. That's kind of weird. Uh, but yeah, take the fucking elephant. That's all I got to say. Uh, JC, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, John Carpenter. Just did a stream about him on Bob's channel. If you didn't watch it, go watch it. I uh, already picked Halloween. Can't pick that. So I grabbed just one of my favorite films by him. Prince of Darkness. This movie is outstanding. Yes, it's not my favorite of his films, but I already grabbed The Thing for something else. But this is right up there with The Thing. I love the scientists trying to explain religious things plot line. And it's just a creepy possession zombie-esque film with a lot of cool effects. And one of my favorite endings, ending shots at least, of any movie that I've ever seen. Brian De Palma. I never used to like Brian De Palma. Like, I don't know why. I mean, I, I always liked Carrie, but beyond that, I just never got into him. I saw a couple of his newer movies and they didn't do it for me at the time. And then uh, luckily Scream Factory... And to a lesser extent, Criterion Collection. Well, they both do. 
have a lot of his movies out. So I slowly watched him. I watched a documentary called De Palma about him. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's a fantastic documentary. On that documentary, they go into his directing style, and it was super interesting, and it made me really want to watch Blowout. So I did, and Blowout is amazing. But that is not what I'm picking here, because everyone's going to pick Blowout. I'm going to go weird and pick Phantom of the Paradise by Brian De Palma, one of his earliest films, long before uh, Blowout was ever a thing. I think this is pre-Carrie. 1974. So yeah, this is the film he did before Carrie, I believe. And it is just a weird, awesome movie. Very cool music. Very cool visually. It's got Brian De Palma's uh, signature split diopter shots and split screen shots he loves to do. I love those. Anytime I watch a film of his, even if I'm not super into the movie, I really get into that style of filmmaking that he's known for. And it's got the girl from uh, Suspiria in it, I believe, right there. So that's cool. My favorite directors. This is why it's not in order. Joel and Ethan Cohen. Everyone knows that if you know me. I literally named my son after them because I love them that much. Uh, you already grabbed Fargo and No Country, which are my two favorite films of theirs. So I just went with this classy number that I still need to watch the Blu-ray of Miller's Crossing on the Criterion Collection. I wish it would have gotten a 4K, but according to Barry Sonnenfeld, the uh, DP of the film, he said the way it was shot and the film stock it was used wouldn't really necessitate a 4K scan, I guess. I don't know. Either way, it's a great movie, another great ensemble. Beautiful cinematography from not Roger Deakins, but from uh, Barry Sonnenfeld, like I said. Yeah, a classic Coen Brothers movie about gangsters and prohibition and all that cool stuff they don't make enough movies about anymore. Marty. Gotta have Marty Scorsese on there. I think I already picked Goodfellas and stuff for other things. I already picked The Aviator, which I'm a big fan of, and no one else is. Gase New York. So I just went easy. I just grabbed Raging Bull, another... <laughs> I don't get to watch my Criterions ever, if you can't tell. But uh, Raging Bull is a great movie. I have seen it a few times. He should have won Best Director for this. It should have won Best Editing. Oh, wait, did it win Best Editing? It did. It won Best Editing and Best Actor. It should have won Best Director and Best Picture as well. So, Raging Bull, there's nothing really to show on the back unless you can read really small letters. But yeah, Robert De Niro, amazing performance. I think he gained like 60 pounds in that movie. I thought it was makeup when I watched it. I like giggled because I thought it was like weird looking makeup the first time I ever watched it. And I was like, holy shit, that was really... <laughs> Mind-boggling. Right. Terry Gilliam, a Minnesota boy as well, just like the Coen brothers. A member of the Monty Python troupe. Another thing I did a video on recently in, uh, back in August. Not August, but uh, July. I did my spoof movie Summer. Talked about Monty Python. Brazil, my favorite film by Terry Gilliam. Far and away. He's a very hit-or-miss director. <laughs> Some of his movies are just not great by the end of it. Some of them, like this one are masterpieces that you really have to get into and understand the concept behind to really enjoy. But this is just one of those so batshit crazy, brilliantly made movies that I just love it. It's one of the most visually stunning films I've ever seen. George Romero. Not a lot of movies to choose from that I'm like in love with, but I already picked Dawn of the Dead. And I was going to pick Day of the Dead, but that's Lazy or Night of the Living Dead. So I thought I'd go Creepshow, because Creepshow's awesome, and you get another Stephen King thing in here, and this is a great release that I'm surprised hasn't been announced for 4K yet. Honestly, I thought that would have been popping up this morning when they were doing all their 4K announcements uh, for December. But yeah, Creepshow, one of the best anthology films of all time, arguably the best, depends on you know your mood, I suppose. But George Romero goes full comic book in this one with Stephen King, and it is perfect. And this is my official 25th one, David Cronenberg. I already picked uh, The Fly, I think. So I went with my next, and, and Videodrome for uh, the A through Z challenge, I think. So I'm just going to go Scanners, which is the other film of his that I like the most that I have seen more than once. But yes, Scanners is a Cronenberg classic, if there ever was one. Arguably his second or third best film of all time, depending on what you're thinking of. If, assuming it's not your favorite, you know. I'm a fly guy. Pretty fly for a white guy, I would say. Uh, but yeah, I love this. I got the old... They re-released this. This is the two-disc version? Or three-disc version, I'm sorry. That Criterion released first when they released it on Blu-ray. So it's got the big, thick boy case on it. And I think they uh, re-released it with just the Blu-ray disc or just two discs or something. And it's not in as cool of a case as this one. So this is the, the fancy scanners. That is it. I've been rambling long enough. 
those are 25 directors, along with some unintentionally mentioned honorable mentions <laughs> that I had throughout. Thanks, Hawk, for these challenges. They are fun, and it's challenging, hence the concept, to pick movies you haven't already picked. So this will be my video for today. And stay tuned for more October content. And if you watched my Hocus Pocus video and unsubscribed to my channel, I'm sorry you don't get jokes. Once again, my name is Derek the Convicted Cinephile. Please like, share, and subscribe. Ring the bell and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Shop, pop, movies.